Hey guys, I'm Roland Tech Enthusiast, and I've been using the Galaxy Z Fold 3 for nearly a year, and here are my thoughts on it. Hope you enjoy. Let's start with the design. My first impression of holding the Galaxy Z Fold 3 was that it's large, heavy, and that it feels like a brick. It's really far from a regular smartphone, and it took me three to four weeks to get used to the heavy weight and the larger size. Another thing that took a while to get used to is the way you hold and operate this phone. It took me a few weeks to figure out how I wanted to take advantage of the larger screen state, since it didn't make sense to unfold it for sending a two-word text message to my friends. Once I figured out the quirks and got used to the new gymnastics this required, it felt like a pleasure to use and although it still felt large and bulky, it was something else. It's hard to describe but once you get used to the possibility of opening up and using a large tablet form factor, it makes it very challenging to go back to regular smartphones. Overall the phone feels very premium all around and even though I used a case in it most of the time, it never felt like a cheap phone, perhaps due to the added weight and size. The Ford Freeze design has kept up well since its launch and it remained easily recognisable over the years. It still looks just as beautiful as the day it was announced. The Galaxy Fold 3 is powered by the Snapdragon 888 chipset coupled with 12GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. I bought the 256GB variant and it was plenty enough to store all of my pictures, videos, games and apps. I never ran out of storage and overall I think it's an excellent hardware at the age 12. There is a fingerprint sensor are embedded into the power button and it always felt convenient and easy to use. It worked perfectly fine without any issues whatsoever. I always used it to make contactless payments and I'm glad that all banking apps and services supported it, unlike some other fingerprint scanners. The folding mechanism was very stiff in the first three months and it's gotten relatively loose over the past year, but this too seems normal and it's still easy to open and stays firmly shut when closed. The internal plastic screen also didn't receive any major damage images, but I always made sure to take extra care of it. So in general, the device's hardware lived up to my expectation and I'm sure it would hold up well for another year or two without any problems. It's worth noting that the hinge took some time to break in, but the display or the screen's crease never got any bigger, and to me it's no longer noticeable unless I directly touch it or look at it. Sure enough, it's visible in certain angles, but if you're looking at the phone directly, you're unlikely to notice the crease. Overall the hardware aged well, and it's still performs like a champ more than a year after its release. It's got everything you need in a smartphone and there's not much I can complain about. The 6.2 inch front display is tall and narrow but it supports 120Hz refresh rate and it's idle for browsing, scrolling Twitter and sending messages. I often found myself using it primarily to exchange messages between friends and family and I also often used it to snap photos in a hurry. Generally the size is adequate for most tasks but it's certainly not for reading or playing games. That being said, the screen is large enough for watching movies, scrolling away on the socials and playing games, but given that you have a 7.6 inch display under the hood, I often found myself unfolding the phone to take advantage of the small tablet form factor. Speaking of the larger display, it's excellent for watching movies, reading and playing games. I also enjoyed browsing, shopping and even messaging as it was much easier and far more entertaining. There aren't a lot of bad things I can say about the display and for those wondering how the device kept up over the past 12 months, I can say that I have no concerns about the durability of the screen or the folding mechanism. However, it's worth noting that you might have to replace the screen protector as it could slowly start to bubble and peel up. I've made a separate video explaining my Samsung upgrade program experience and I'll leave it in the description down below. The display crease also didn't bother me too much, although it's noticeable and visible in certain lighting conditions and when you look at the device from other angles. It was especially noticeable when I tried to draw using the S Pen, but you get used to it after a while. The under display camera is also clearly visible if you look for it, but it can't be seen when the display is showing black or dark colours. I usually only noticed it when I purposely looked for it, and it went invisible to my eyes when I played games, used a phone or watched a movie. Overall the two displays are excellent and the only complaint I have is that the front display is too narrow and too tall, although both of these issues have already been addressed on the Galaxy Fold 4. I do wish the screen was wider like on the Oppo Find N2, but let's hope that will become a reality on the Galaxy Fold 5 coming later in 2023. The Snapdragon 888 chipset might not be the latest and most powerful chip anymore, but it handled multitasking, graphics intensive games and everything else extremely well. I never experienced any sluggish behaviour or any 
slight slowdowns whatsoever. The phone did run hot every once in a while, but it never became a problem. Navigating, multitasking, using the camera and switching between multiple apps was always smooth, fast and fluid, and the 12 gigs of RAM certainly helped with that. The entire experience has been bug free, and this has got to be my favourite device for gaming and multitasking. Everything felt snappy and the performance was consistently smooth and excellent. The connectivity was always great and I never had any issues with Wi-Fi, 4G or 5G. Everything downloaded quickly and the phone always switched to the correct access point at my home. Overall, the Galaxy Fold 3 never left me wanting more and it could easily do everything. Samsung UI changed a lot in recent years and I've come to fall in love with its simplicity and clean looks. There are lots of nice animations and effects and it always felt smooth and snappy. The Fold 3 packs a ton of unique features that lets you manage and take advantage of the 7.6 inch display. First and foremost, there's the edge panel that lets you multitask and quickly drag and drop applications anywhere on the screen. Second, there's an option to enable flex mode for specific apps. When you're watching YouTube or any other streaming service, you can tilt the display slightly and gain access to buttons such as screenshot, media player, brightness and audio settings. This flex mode is also handy when using the camera since you can easily tilt up the phone and use it as a tripod. This lets you take some breathtaking photos at night, but I'll get back to this in just a second. There's also an option to show a preview of the camera when taking selfies or taking photos of others which once again is excellent for letting people know how they'll appear in the final shot. There are a bunch of other cool features such as the option to continue using apps on the cover screen when closing the main display, changing aspect ratios for applications that aren't supported properly and many more. The S Pen is also here and while I enjoyed my time with it, I found myself barely using it since there was no place to store it. The pen ended up gathering dust in my drawer and I rarely used it in the past 12 months. Overall, the software remained impressive, fast and fluid. Samsung has also become one of the best OEMs when it comes to supporting their devices and providing timely OS updates. If you want a solid experience with no cartoony looks, then Samsung's got your back. Moving on to the camera. The Galaxy Fold 3 is excellent. The phone received a lot of criticism for not having an adequate camera setup, but I think Samsung made up with it on the software side of things. All three sensors on the back had a consistent color science and the primary shooter can still take some breathtaking photos both day and night. In low light it does introduce quite a bit of noise, but given that you're looking at the darkness and pitch black places, it's something that most devices still struggle with today. The wide angle camera was also useful and there wasn't much distortion on the sides, generally it performed really well during daytime but sometimes introduced too much noise and the sharpness took a big hit at night and in low light environments. I often found myself taking a few steps back and using the primary camera and left the wide angle for good lighting environments. As for the 2 times optical telephoto camera, I haven't used it much and I still believe that a measly 2 times zoom isn't justified having on a smartphone, especially on one that costs this much. When it comes to the selfie camera, it was pretty good. The front facing camera was great when chatting with friends and family and it's generally a great snapper. I do want to mention that for selfies there's an option that lets you use the rear camera which can yield much better results, but for video crawling and quick selfies it was great. However, the same same thing cannot be said about the under display camera. The 4 megapixel shooter can come in handy and I did find myself using it more often than the other selfie shooter but the results are awful, especially in very bright and well lit environments. I've used this most of the time as it was more comfortable but it's not ideal if you want others to see a sharp, nice image of you. The battery is where the Galaxy Fold 3 fails. During my use, it was just fine. I wish I could say it was amazing but that would be far from the truth. The thing is that once you unfold the display you're using twice as much power and it's only packed with a 4400 mAh battery that only supports 25W fast wire charging. Topping up the device is slow, especially when compared to Oppo, Xiaomi and other Chinese manufacturers. I was able to go for an entire workday on a single charge but I would often find myself looking for a charger by the end of the day. When I used the larger screen more, the battery depleted much faster and if I decided to game for a little bit, it would go more rapidly. In an ideal scenario, you can go for a full day by using a few apps, browsing, watching a few videos and playing a few games, all while having mixed use between the small and the larger screen. Still, you'll be keeping a close eye on the battery indicator. If you're a power user, you likely want to top up midday to stay powered for the rest of the day. I wish the Fold 3 had a larger battery and faster charging since this is one of the main reasons why it might not be for many people. The Samsung Galaxy Fold 3 is my favourite device of all time and I never had as much time with a smartphone as much I had 
but this. The software is excellent, the performance is blazing fast, the camera is decent in all lighting conditions, and while the battery has a lot to be desired, it's not a bad phone overall. So you'll have to top up multiple times on a daily, especially if you're a power user or take a lot of photos, but I'm really impressed with how the Fold 3 kept up over the past year. It never hung up on me, and it was always a device I could count on. The only caveat in my opinion is the battery and for some, the camera performance. Luckily, the Galaxy Fold 4 fixes most of these problems, but if you're on a lower budget, then I can confidently say that the Galaxy Fold 3 will hold up well over the next two years. It's already discounted by most retailers and you can get it for less than half price. If you want to give the folding smartphones a try then this is the perfect time to get started. The Galaxy Fold 3 is an easy recommendation for those wanting to join the affordable smartphone world and it's more accessible than ever. If you have a higher budget I'd probably recommend the Fold 4 instead as it fixes most of the problems with the Fold 3 but if you want something functional at an affordable price range then the Fold 3 is the way to go. And there you have it. Thank you for watching, I hope you found this video useful, if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. With all that said, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.